Alrighty then. Well, there we go. Fleet carriers are announced and details revealed. Well, at least most of them, because there are plenty of details that were still left off and not quite answered, but we'll get those in time. But what matters right now is to do some hotcakes! <laughs> So first things first, we obviously know that the fleet carriers will cause the eye-watering 5 billion credits, and we'll get to that point a little bit later, but we now know that there will be also a weekly upkeep of 10 million starting. So that means, first of all, that every upgrade, like uh, shipyard and outfitting and whatnot else, will cost extra to purchase first and obviously maintain later on. So will the crew. Yes, you're gonna be able to buy crew as well. Or rather, you're gonna need that. The thing is, I did a joke stream on 1st April, that is yesterday, claiming that the upgrades are gonna cost 15 billion. And honestly, now it feels like that might be actually true. Oh, God. But aside from that, there are some good things, of course. Like, for example, the jumping out animation that they basically reuse from capital ships, which I expected them to do, and that is nice to see again. Then there's the ability to position your fleet carrier by a celestial body. Uh, that is a planet or a star, of course, and any of them that you like, rather than just have a predetermined point or randomly chosen point in Super Cruise. Then ability to determine which types of people can actually land on your mega ship, like the people from your squadron, friend list, combined of those two, or none at all. Ability to purchase in specific ships that you can sell to others. The same with modules and, of course, commodities. And better yet, there is a commodity storage too. However, this doesn't mean that the BGS people will be able to abuse this thing for their BGS needs. As a matter of fact, developers made a point to not include, or rather try to exclude fleet carriers from BGS as much as possible, which is why you're not gonna find universal cartographics as well as the mission board on these things. As for being in debt, now obviously, as I previously mentioned, it will cost every week for you to upkeep your ship, and I'll talk about that in just a bit. But basically, if you don't have enough money, you're gonna go in debt. Now, as developers said, if you get into a huge quote-unquote debt, your ship will be set in the commission mode, which means it's gonna be sold after a few days. And if it does get sold, or you yourself just decide to decommission it, things on it will be sold along with the ship itself. And you'll lose about 15% from what I could tell from their stream. Obviously, these values they have not announced, so that's kind of frustrating to calculate, but that's my figure, so uh, take it with a great assault. Of course, if other players have placed their stuff on your mega ship, like, you know, ships and so on and so forth, their ships will be transferred somewhere else rather than sold with the thing, because obviously that'd be a bad idea. But yeah, decommissioning a fleet carrier is essentially gonna lose you, let's see, 15% from 5 billion. Yeah, that's a lump sum. 750 million. Oh my. Now, of course, you may be lucky. Let's say you are a big trader or you manage to put your mega ship, I uh, mean, fleet carrier in a very useful place where people would uh, buy and sell stuff to it, like commodities, ships, and whatnot else. Or they just need repairs and whatnot else. And you put in a decent amount of uh, uh, tariff on it. So basically, it is more expensive to buy anything from mega ships. I mean, fleet carriers, but let's just gloss over that fact for now. Let's say you have enough traffic coming in. Well, okay, you may actually make money out of it, and honestly, it's not a bad thing. Sure, that's a decent way to kind of make extra cash, but again, the biggest issue I have is about the whole weekly upkeep. Of course, you can add to the ship's wallet, uh, basically transfer your own personal funds to the ship's funds, and it will take debt out of that. But regardless, it's still losing money every week for, well, as we'll discuss later, some wonderful reasons. Now, before we get into the fun stuff, well, there is one really good thing that I do want to talk about before we get into it, and that is the player organized or dictated markets. See, for the first time, Elite Dangerous is gonna allow players to dictate prices of commodities. Now, the ranges and how it's gonna happen, we're gonna properly feel when the beta comes, but until then, well, it's still nice to see that at least they have put in 
in some effort, though without playing I'm kinda hesitant to use the word effort. Still, I'm kinda hopeful about it, cause that would mean that the trading game might end up being something pretty decent, rather than AI controlled algorithm stuff. Yeah, it's very fun to do the trade when the Bobby AI is doing the trading, isn't it? And now it's time to get in the fun stuff, and the first thing is the fact that there will be microtransactions, or rather, cosmetical things you can buy, and uh, honestly, who didn't expect that? Yeah, but we're not here for that, we're here for the upkeep topic, so, just a plain old carrier without anything in it, apparently gonna be taking 10 million a week to upkeep. And that number only will increase with more stuff that you put on it. I really wonder what will be the maximum cost, because I did kinda jokingly do this one thing on April 1st about 15 billion for extra upgrades, so if I'm correct then oh no. It's all fun and games until you start dissecting the corpse, so let's get on with it, shall we? In game design terms, now what is the 10 million supposed to achieve? Now it's obviously not there to improve your gameplay in any story way, or there is no story application for it, that'd be the first, but no, there is obviously a reason to keep you playing, to keep you returning, to keep you continuously grinding. Time and time again, Frontier Developments has chosen to show off that they are more interested about actual player numbers consistently playing their game, rather than showcasing that the game is interesting and depthful, balanced and fair. No, they are more interested in fact that the people keep returning and playing and playing and playing. I always had the suspicion that developers are just simply making these grind-tastic features for the game, be that credit grind for normal ships or material grind for engineers, so increasingly frustrating just to show off the figures for their stakeholders and shareholders. And that was the only thing that mattered for them, beyond of course making money. Is that really how you make a game? Is that really what you think is fun and what this game really needs? Do we need more credit sinks? I get it that a lot of people have sunk a lot of time, I mean I'm an example of that, in this game, but just so blatantly strapping on top of all that. A beating stick? Is that really something that we needed or wanted? Did you learn nothing from power play and how disgustingly annoying that was? I mean no one plays power play these days on a serious level. That's how we, the players, react when we see a punishment system. And the weekly upkeep is just the same thing. Slightly different, of course. But nonetheless, it's a punishment system because, oh no, if you don't come back on a weekly basis, or at least once a month, guess what? We're gonna take away your toys. Or better yet, they're just saying, mm -hmm, it'd be a shame if, oh, oh, if we took away your toys. <laughs> You know, you get the gist there. The simple fact here is that the 5 billion was already massive entry border, so that most players won't even bother to get it. But now you strap on top of that, for those folks who already have spent massive amounts of time in-game grinding it, another stick to keep beating them? I mean, holy crap, I don't beat that many horses and that often. Yeah, but Yemex, you see, okay, let's say that you do have enough money for the upkeep for multiple years, as a matter of fact, you're multi-billionaire. Well, then you can reserve all that money for the future thing and you can go on a vacation for years. Okay, sure, yeah, you can do that, but the fact is, this is a psychological tool, not an actual physical one. Otherwise, you could have just done simply a monthly, maybe even a yearly down payment for that megaship, I mean, fleet carrier, rather than a weekly one. Ask yourself then, why do it weekly? Because it's cheaper for some people? Well, maybe, but that's not the real reason. Just think about it. The fact that it's so often and the fact that it exists in the first place already tells you that, that it's meant to be a mental stick, a mental prod, to keep reminding you, hey, hey, have you played Elite today? Have you played Elite this week? You better play it. Play it, play it, play it. Oh, but there's no gameplay in it. Oh, sorry. Oh, and if you have this argument about, oh, there has to be some sort of a threat to it, or you losing it since you can't damage it, um, 
no, why can't we just have one nice thing and not worry about it? Hey, maybe something that we could call home. But you know, this is the baffling part. The developer team clearly have or hopefully had learned something from power play that no one really responds that well to a beating stick. And instead, these weekly free Arx points, as much as I loathe them, are looked at way more positively. Why couldn't they just simply implement something positive each week that you would get, rather than have a constant beating stick that bogs you every week? You know, perhaps having a cherry cupcake to return to each week, rather than to a savage beating. I mean, for crying out loud, I have plenty of Urlas around for free. Why do I need Elite Dangerous to do that for me? And then there's the information in the way that is represented to us by the PR mouthpieces. They constantly have this... Oh, we know that you want to take a break from your second job. So we implemented a slight debt system. So when you return to your second job again, you can continue to grind our game. And of course, everything is exciting. Every time I read these things about uh, taking a break or vacation and whatnot else, it feels like they have a complete disconnect from their own gaming community that built around them. And it feels like they're showing contempt for the community rather than care. It truly is worrying. And yes, again, I understand this is meant for the end, end, end game, for people who have played thousands of hours. But when they want to beat with the sticks, the people who have played their game the most, what do they think when they look at you, the average player? I dread to even think. You know, that one famous chick comes to mind, that one royalty who said, let them eat cake to the homeless. And with that thought, I leave you. Sound off down below if you have anything to add for the whole fleet carriers. Uh, maybe you have your own ways and ideas how to perhaps fix it or improve it or... Well, anyways, what do you think? Let me know. And uh, hey, if you want to support the videos that I make and all that stuff, well, there is the Patreon down below and I really do appreciate it in these uh, rather interesting times in the world. That aside, take care and I'll see you around.